Hi everyone, welcome back to CSS Nippets. Today we're going to build one of the most important parts of any website, a responsive navigation bar. Nowadays, most people browse the web using their smartphones. That's why having a responsive navbar is so important. It improves your website's user experience and ensures it looks great on any device. Here's what we'll create. 1. A navbar that adjusts to different screen sizes. 2. On mobile, the links will be hidden behind a menu button. 3. When the button is clicked, it opens a stylish sidebar menu where you can add links, icons, a search bar, or even drop-down menus. In this tutorial, I'll show you step-by-step -step how to create a simple yet beautiful responsive navbar using HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Let's get started. First, we'll build the basic HTML structure for the navbar. Start by creating the navbar with a nav tag and a class called navbar container. Add a logo using a tag with the class navbar logo and link it to index.html. Next, add a menu button for mobile devices using a button with the class navbar toggle. Inside the button, include three span elements with the class bar to create a hamburger icon. Next, let's add the navigation menu. Use an UL tag with the class navbar menu to hold all the menu items. Inside the UL, add multiple LI elements, each containing an A tag for the links. For example, you can include links for home, about, services, blog, and contact. Now, let's style the navbar using CSS to make it look clean and professional. We will add basic CSS, such as centering the content and adding a background image. Let's start styling the navbar. First, create a flexible layout and center the content both vertically and horizontally. Set the height to 80 pixels and the width to 100%. Make the navbar sticky at the top by using position sticky and setting top zero. Add a transparent background, apply a box shadow with 50% opacity, and use backdrop filter for a blur effect. Finally, set a high Z index to ensure the navbar stays on top of other elements. Now you can see the navbar content is centered. Next, let's style the navbar container. Create a flexible layout. Align the content vertically in the center and space it evenly using justify content. Set the width to 100% and add padding of 02 rem for spacing on the sides. Finally, set the maximum width to 1600 pixels to keep the design neat on larger screens. Now, let's design the logo. Set the font size to 2 rem and make it bold. Change the text color to white and remove the underline. Finally, add a pointer cursor to make it clickable. Then we style the navbar menu. Use flex to align the menu items in a row and center the text. Add spacing between the items using gap and remove the default bullet points. You can see the menu is now properly aligned and styled. Next, let's style the menu links. Set text decoration none to remove the underline and set the text color to white. Set the font size to 1.3 rem and make it slightly bold. Add padding of 3 pixels, 20 pixels for spacing around the text and apply a border radius of 20 pixels. Set the border to 2 pixels, solid transparent when the link is hovered over. Apply a smooth 0.7 second transition and use white space no wrap to prevent the text from wrapping onto a new line. When you hover over the menu links, the text color will change to a dark shade, the background will turn light blue with some transparency, and a two-pixel white border will appear around the link. Let's design the navbar toggle button, make the background transparent, add 10 pixels of padding for space, and remove the border with border none, then set cursor pointer to make it clickable. Let's design the bars inside the toggle button. Set display block to make each bar appear as a block. Set the width to 25 pixels and the height to 3 pixels. Add 5 pixels of space between each bar. Change the background color to white. Now add a smooth transition with 0.3 second ease in out. But you can see the toggle is still visible, so add display none in the toggle CSS. Now the toggle will not be visible. We've designed the nav bar, but it's not responsive yet. To make it responsive on any device, we can use a media query. First, we add a media query for screens with a width of 880 pixels or less. Inside the media query, we remove the backdrop filter. 
Let's style the navbar menu for smaller screens. Set flex direction column to stack the menu items vertically. Align the items to the left and set a gap of 1.7 rem between the items. Position the menu absolutely at the top right corner. Set the height to 100 viewport heights and the width to 250 pixels. Also set top and right to zero. Add padding of 5 rem, 1.5 rem for spacing and apply a box shadow for depth. Finally, use Backdrop Filter to add a blur effect to the background. Now, you can see that when the screen size is lower than 880 pixels, the hamburger menu should appear, but the toggle isn't visible yet. So, we add this CSS to make the toggle button show by setting Display Block and giving it Z-Index value to ensure it stays on top. When we click on the toggle button, the menu doesn't show or hide yet, so we can add JavaScript to make this work. In JavaScript, select the toggle button using document.querySelector.navbarToggle and the menu using document.querySelector.navbarMenu. Then, add a click event listener to the toggle button. Inside the event, use Classless Toggle Active for both the toggle button and the menu. This will show or hide the menu when you click the toggle button. Now we add the active class in CSS. When the navbar menu has active, we set display flex to make the menu visible. Now let's style the toggle button when it's active. For the second bar, set opacity, zero to make it invisible. For the first bar, use transform to move it down by eight pixels and rotate it by 45 degrees. For the third bar, use transform to move it up by negative eight pixels and rotate it by negative 45 degrees. This creates the effect of a cross or X shape when the toggle button is active. Now, you can see that when the hamburger menu is open, clicking the toggle doesn't close the menu. So, we add display none in the navbar menu CSS to fix this. Now, when you click on the toggle, the menu opens and closes easily. Next, we add a media query for devices with a width of 480 pixels or less. Inside it, we reduce the padding of the navbar container to 0.1 rem to adjust the layout for smaller screens. We reduce the size of the navbar logo for smaller screens by setting the font size to 1.7 rem. We make the menu links smaller for smaller screens by setting the font size to 1.2 rem and reducing the padding to 3 pixels 15 pixels. Now, we add the active class to the home link in the HTML to show it as the current page. We also apply the active class in the navbar menu hover styling so you can see a nice effect around the active menu item. Now, our navbar is fully responsive for all devices. It's a very useful and essential feature for any modern website.